pleasure to have you connecting with us uh, this afternoon for the youth uh, fireside chat, which forms part of the Africa Safer Internet Day celebrations. And um, my task is very simple to start with, uh, because we have uh, two able uh, young people who will be taking over the steering wheel to run the show. And then uh, we have uh, facilitators who would uh, come in at some point to uh, play a role. Uh, essentially, we have uh, Tosin from Nigeria and uh, we have uh, David from Ghana. Hello everyone, my name is Ade Emilio Tosin and I'm one of the moderators from Nigeria. And um, I'm talking about the um, Africa Safer Internet Day, ACID, and the African Day, which is um, a general discussion by all African ITU member states to begin to champion the celebration of the day within the continent effective 2020. And then um, it enables the choice of theme for the celebration to take on board the peculiar, the peculiar and diverse needs of the continent. And um, I have my other members with me today. I have Ola Oluwa, Ola, Ola Fatodu, Nyoma Okoye, me, Chibuke, Keker, Kekocha, um, Ayo Deji, Adiemi, and Ayo Damola, Misili, and Ayo Mide, Misili. Yes, so now we, we, we want to hear from uh, Madam Aida Jalo, uh, the representative from the IT Regional Office of Afri for Africa, to share with us a brief purpose of this uh, fireside chat and why she considers it's a very important conversation this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Awo. Thank you very much, Tosin and all those wonderful people that are with you that you introduced during your introductory remarks. Um, as I will have said, I work for the ITU. I'm in the regional office um, for Africa, which is located in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. I'm the program coordinator. And one of the things that I do is working on COP, which is ch child online protection. So how do we keep you guys online whilst you're interacting on the internet? And I think you will all agree with me that uh, COVID-19 has made this question even more uh, important now because in 2019, when COVID happened, all our lives totally moved online. And a lot of you were not going to school, you were doing your schooling from your houses and you were following your lectures on the internet. Because of that, and because Africa is talking about digitalization, everybody wants to have the digital transformation in all of our countries, we are going to be spending more time online, not less. So since we're going to be spending more time online, what are the things that we're doing to ensure that we will be as safe as possible on the online space, just like we look after our safety when we are in our homes, when we are in our schools, when we're in the car going somewhere, when we're walking down the street, we, we don't want anybody to pick our pockets or somebody to steal our phones. That's the same way that we need to ensure that we are on the internet. When we're on the internet, we're safe and that our data is protected, our identities are protected. So this fireside, uh, fireside chat that we're having today is actually for us to just come together and discuss with each other, entertain as many questions as possible on what are the things, what are the concrete things that you can do just to make sure that you are safe when you're on the internet. And the reason why I am coming from the ITU to talk about that 
is because I will, will tell you that when the African countries met in Ghana in 2019, there was a unanimous decision that um, ITU should be the one coordinating the celebration of Africa Safer Internet Day. So we all know that Africa Safer Internet Day is just coming up on the 9th of February. So we've started a series of events to raise awareness, to highlight the issues on the child online safety. And this fireside um, chat that we're having today, this Sunday, 7th of February is just one of those events. So I know it's Sunday and usually, you know, on Sundays we're all off to our various things. But believe me when I tell you that being here together with all of you young children from Africa, talking about this issue is really key. It's really important. And it's going to make the next couple of hours that we spend together very effective in terms of what are the things that we are going to do going forward? What are the actual things that we can do individually, but also we can do together as a group? So it gives me a lot of pleasure to be with you this, this Sunday afternoon. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised that the Ethiopian network is allowing my video to go on because I will tell you that sometimes even for the voice to go on uninterrupted is a problem. But I see that this Sunday, not only are you hearing me, but my video is also on and you can see me. And hopefully, you know, if the network continues, I want to keep it that way until we reach the end of this chat. So I wish to take this opportunity on behalf of ITU, on behalf of the regional office of Africa, on behalf of the regional director of the office, who is Mr. Andrew Rugege, to welcome all of you to this chat that we are going to have. Over to you, Awo. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Choma. Thank you, Ms. Choma. Um, what do you often use the internet for? Anybody? Please, can you introduce yourself? Okay, so what do we often use your internet for? And chat. Okay. Thank you, Ayo, for your answer. Any any no. other person? Okay, Chibike is on me on me too. So. We often use the we often use the internet for playing games, to study and interact with people you know. Can you give me examples of games you play online? Online. PlayStation games like race car games, fighting games, wrestling, so on. Thank you. Yeah. Any other person? What do you often use the internet for? I'm Nanama from Methodist Girls, Ghana. And well, I usually use the internet for research work. And I also use the internet for just basically searching for videos, movies, cooking, and all this stuff. Thank you. Um, any, any other person have anything to say on why we, what you often use the internet for? Is there anybody some interest to? Okay, allow me to call me to make. Thank you. I mostly use the internet for interacting with friends, classmates, mostly. I, what social networks do you use? Oh, I use WhatsApp mainly. Instagram a bit. Facebook, Snapchat, D likes. Okay. So um I know we often use the internet a lot for different things. And um before anybody has any other thing to say, I know we often use the internet for a lot of things like 
during this lockdown, we actually use it for online classes. I know people usually chat with their friend online and um, also play games like a more chibi set with these playstations online. And um, our next question is how useful was the internet to you during the lock times or times that you had to use it? Um, Lua, Lua, do you see any? Thank you. Okay. The internet was very useful in the aspect of um, it kept us sane. Like when we couldn't have human interactions with other people, classmates for a long period of time, parents at home getting getting pretty. I, I, um, any other question, um, answer? How useful was the internet to you during your lockdown? Okay, um, any other person? Um, Nana, do you have anything to say? Okay, no, no, not really. But the internet was useful to you during the lockdown, right? Well, yeah, the internet was quite useful. How internet, was it quite useful? Okay, so during this lockdown, for instance, people, we all know we were all at home, we weren't going for school. But through the internet, people were able to learn at home. We had online classes, like um, through Zoom itself, we had online classes through WhatsApp, we had Google Classroom, so many various platforms for learning. So. That's how useful the internet has been of late. And sometimes to pertaining the COVID-19 issue, when people want to know more about the world, maybe you're supposed to go for an discussion, but due to COVID, you can't go. That's when we make use of the internet to search for such things. And through the internet, so people have discovered their talents. Okay, so through the internet, I personally have learned, have realized that I'm more into cooking, that's foreign dishes, local dishes, including Asian um, dishes and African dishes. If it hadn't been for the internet, yeah. If it, hadn't, if it hadn't been for the internet, I wouldn't have realized it. Moreover, people have also realized other things about the internet and people have gotten attached to certain things. Maybe someone might have gone to the internet to search for something, ended up watching a poetic video. Now the person is to poetry, writing, dancing, music, a whole lot. So. The internet is quite useful. Thank you so much, Nana, for your contribution. Please, does your friend have anything to say? Your friend decided, does she have anything to say? How useful was your internet to you? Yes. Um, as Nana already said, it was very useful through the use of um, various platforms to be able to attend classes online. And personally to me, it helped me know a lot about, um, I like learning about other countries. So through the internet, I was able to make a lot of researches and be able to know more how people live in other countries and how I could probably help the less fortunate. So it really helped a lot. Sorry, I didn't quite get your name. Marianne. Marianne. Thank you so much, Marianne, for your contribution. Um, your friend beside you, does she have anything to say on how useful the internet was to her during the lockdown? And um, time that she and she should introduce herself, her name. Okay, so I'm Joanna. Um, I'm Joanna. Um, I'm Joanna. Hello, I don't hear you. Joanna, so okay, Joanna. Jo Sorry, you can't Joanna. Thank you. The internet, the internet has also been very useful to me personally. I use it to research a lot of apps um, for cartooning, animation, and 
but I'm into I'm more into art stuff. So I want to learn those stuff. So I research into it and how to make create a YouTube channel, what you need to do and other things. So I guess that's that's really been useful. Yes, nice. Of course, as you all know, the internet is very, very useful to us, especially during the lockdown. Please, does anybody have any other contribution to add to this? David, do you have anything to say? David. Um, okay, um, what would you say contributes to a safer internet for your age group? I think there should be restrictions to what the child is allowed to do or what the child does on the internet. But, it, but determining on the child is because there are some apps that have like restrictions on what the child is on what. Okay. Determining on the child's age, there are most apps have a particular age group for who can use the app and who can So basically, um, follow the rules of what an app allows you to do and don't try to bend the rules when using the app. Um, okay, um, GBK, what do you um, say contributes to a safe internet for your age group? Contribute that we should start, we should like, we should not be going for to all these places like Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram because there are some things that is not really for people's age. Okay, thank you, um, Chibuke. Nana, Nana wants to speak. Nana, please, can you unmute your mic? Please, can you um, tell us what you can say it contributes to a safer internet for your age group? Um, what, what I think is that for basic apps and websites that um, like there should be age restrictions depending on the content that is shown on that app or website. Thank you. Nana, please can you unmute your mic? Please what can you say can contribute to a safe intern safe safer internet for your age group? Okay, so we all know the apps nowadays have age restrictions on it. So these age restrictions are actually supposed to prevent people, my age rates, or people lesser from accessing things that are not any for them. So the age restriction also leads to a safer internet, safer access to internet. And also we can have parental, gu parental guidance Okay, so parents can moderate whatever their children, their words are doing online. We also help gain safer access to the internet. Again, we can think recently in Ghana, some students were working out on a project of an app. And this app is to track whatever your child uses the internet for, working on this application. And that's to track whatever your child is using the internet for. So you just connect it to the child's phone and that's it. Whatever the child search for will pop up onto your phone. So when your child is misusing the internet, you know, and then you know what to do. So yeah, this is some of the things. And once in a while, you can survey the child's web. You now we have application that's the history of what you search for. So as a, as a parent, not only parents, but once in a while, you can just pick up the phone, pick up the laptop, whatever the child is using to access the internet. Then you survey whatever the child has been doing for the past few days. So yeah, it also contributes to safer internet for the child. Plus, okay. plus, we can also okay. have a password. No, continue. We can also, we can also put a password in, on, on the application. For instance, with age restrictions, some application have it in such a way that you have to put a password on it. So a parent can pick up the phone, assess the age res restriction, and then put a password on it, which the child wouldn't know. So the child wouldn't be able to assess it. And then for um, email, such things, you can also put a password on it. And then we have a backup application, which will prevent 
scamming and such things. Remember, we are not only referring to ourselves, but referring to other people gain, gaining access to us through the internet. Thank you, Nana. Um, Ayo Jamala, you, is there anything you have to say? Yeah, I'd like to ask you a question too. Okay. All right. So you can ask the question to you. Ask us what we use the internet for. Yeah, I'm saying you ask us what we use the internet for, but we didn't get yes. a what you use the internet for. Oh. Yes. I'm, yes I'm so not... If you could educate us on what you also use the internet for. I actually use the internet for a lot of things like you guys. I actually use the internet to check for information, like maybe a teacher gave me an assignment to do and I really need to go and check for an information on the site. I go through the internet and I also use the internet to chat with my friends too. And um, I also use the internet to also play games and also video call with my friends, many things. So, um, yes, I also use the internet for online classes because of during this lockdown, we actually really used the online classes and MS things like that was the um, app that we actually used for our online class and it was really helpful. During this lockdown, I actually enjoyed using the internet because it actually helped us a lot and actually helped me a lot to get much information that I needed like, for example, I need a word from a dictionary, but I can't start opening the dictionary and checking for the word. I just use my phone and search it out, and, I, and it comes out with a brief explanation for me. So, as about what I use the internet for. Okay, please. I think this, this question goes out to everybody here. Um, so, would we say, we, we all know that internet has been useful, but would you possibly say that? Because we know some cases that arise when, some cases that rose up when we are home of students like us, our age mates, is using the internet. So not from your point of view, but everybody's point of view. Would we all say that the internet has really been effective and it's really safe for us to accept? Now, I know that it, nowadays now, I know that the internet is safer for our age group because now, the, as you had said, there is age restrictions now. So, and there are some sites that you can enter the child friendly. And I believe that children of any age can enter the internet now because it's well protected. Oh, oh okay. Okay, please. Um, I think I'd like to hear a comment from Ida. Ida Jau, Jau, Jalu. But if you have any question, you can put it on the chat room or the answer. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, I was just looking at the poll. We had quite a few interesting questions that came up on the poll. And I was also looking at the answers we got from the poll. So, for example, 63% of you answered that you use the internet to play games. And 25% answered that you use the internet for news. And then there was a 38% uh, of you that answered that you use it for home study. And then you had 50% uh, who use it to connect with friends. And the 63% who use it for entertainment. And the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm saying this, it brings me to the next poll result, which was like 88% uh, that says that uh, they believe online connections are very helpful. So which way you look at it, the internet is here to stay. And from the percentages I'm seeing from all these poll questions that you have answered, it shows that the use of the internet, if anything, is going to increase, especially among young people. And I think that's what we want to see. But also because there are these other things that are there, 
that could be negative. That is why we're having a, a discussion such as this one, so that you'll be able to better navigate when you're on the internet. So the, the, the poll question that I found interesting, the answers that you gave was seeing something hurtful online. And that was a like 50% split because in the poll results, 50% of you said, no, you have not seen anything hurtful online, while another 50% said that you have seen something hurtful. And I think that is, that is the, the number that we want to decrease further. So for example, what one of, one of the speakers said about monitoring by parents, we feel is very key because we feel that parents cannot just buy these gadgets, pay for internet connectivity and just leave all these gadgets at your fingertips without actually bothering to monitor and to interact with you and to have the necessary discussions with you to ensure that you are using it to the, to the best, best possible use. So I, I was really glad that one of the um, solutions that you offered yourself was that there needed to be parental monitoring when it, when it comes to what you're doing online. And then of course you had the more technical things of password protecting some of the apps so that if you don't have a certain age, there are certain apps that you cannot open. So I think all of these are, are, are very excellent um, discussions, very excellent issues that I, that I hear are coming up from you. But in terms of the internet right now, the experience you have in the internet, what I want you to tell us is what do you feel would make your experiences on the internet better? Is there anything out there that you can just think of like um, immediately one, two points that you can tell Choma, you can tell Awo, you can tell myself that, you know, you guys, if you, if you help us on this aspect, it's going to impact positively our online experiences. So I, I want you to tell us about that. I want you, if you are not able for any reason, maybe connectivity or anything to take the floor and talk to us to put it in the chat so that we can, we can continue to discuss some of the issues that you guys bring up. Uh, Choma, uh, Awo, can I throw it over to any one of you? Do you want to add anything? Over to you, Desmond. All right, thank you all. Um, thanks to everybody. Um, I must say that the contribution so far actually on point in the sense that um, most of the notes that I make to run through um, has been picked up from various angles. So that also gives me the, the, the hope that the, um, the kids, at least at this level, appreciate what internet safety is. So um, I'll take my submission from probably three angles. The first one is to address the question of whether or not the internet itself is safe. Um, Guys, you have to take your mind off the internet for a minute. Let's let's bring it into the normal world. In in your vicinity or your neighborhood, I am very sure not every place is a place you would like to go. <laughs> that is how safety starts. It's the same with the internet. So it it's it is not in my place to say, oh, the internet is generally safe. You you you, you can go there. Everything is fine. The internet is as safe as the user wants it to be because naturally there are parts of the internet just by visiting the place your life is in danger. There are parts of the internet just by connecting your device that you connected is in danger. You might have heard the word hacking. Okay, so there are pages that when you connect to a hacker has already compromised your device. He has access to your files. He has access to your video cam. He has access to anything, whether you are using a phone, a laptop, or a normal computer. Now, if you are threading on the areas where safety has been assured for you, then obviously, for as long as you are using the internet, you are safe. Don't you agree? You know, because if you leave those safety spots and now you go into the endangered areas, 
then obviously you are exposing yourself to a broader risk which might not benefit you. And mind you, your online activities also map to your real life activities. And let me explain that. As you use social media for you, those of you might be 13 years and above and uh, uh, or you probably have uh, parental accounts have been created for you and you use it for, for your social media. As you take pictures of yourself and then you geotag, geotagging is when you take a picture and then you post it online and show where you took the picture and then you add your caption. It's called geotagging. So when you geotag yourself with a picture on social media and you are consistent in that activity, so I'll create an activity uh, outline for you. When I wake up in the morning after getting myself done, I take a picture and tag, tag the location of my house, ready for work. As soon as I leave work, whilst I was in the traffic, uh, probably some two, 300 meters away from the house, I take another picture in the car and then I geotag my, myself um, with the location and maybe add a caption, um, heavy traffic this morning, but we are still living it. <laughs> you know how the social media activity goes. And then you continue you probably uh, take a stop to maybe buy breakfast um, at the Coco Sellers place. And then you took a picture, you geotag the location again. When you get to the office, you do the same. Guys, what you have done is this. You've actually told an attacker who is interested in stalking you physically, your route from the house all the way to your office. So that's what I meant by even your online activity can actually map to your real life activities because whatever an attacker or whatever the bad guy is looking for online, they may be able to use it to either engage you online or engage you offline. So your own activity online, it's very, very, very important. And that's why I wanted to um, clarify the, 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 the question of whether the internet is, is, is safe. Oh, I don't know if um, these are good times to be putting one or two demos here and there. Yeah, I think we could have one and then uh, okay. uh, Tossing will take over or David will take over and then we can come back for another. So we interspace it. Okay. With. Okay, okay. That's fine. That's fine. All right. So a few things that I, 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 I put down, I think I should just run through quickly. Most important for me is what we call the parental shadowing, which also you mentioned in different ways that um, you would like the parents to be part of your use of the internet. But you see, parental shadowing is a bigger umbrella. So let's look at some of the things that could go under the shadowing. First of all, you must have some sort of internal rules on the use of the internet. By age, what kind of search engine can the child use? It is important. It goes back to the first point that I'm making. If you, as a child, you are allowed to use search engines that adults use, then automatically, by default, the things you are looking for are things that are, you know, rated for adults. So you might, you might genuinely be looking for maybe a novel or um, a puzzle book, and you will end up in an X-rated website, which is not meant for your consumption. So you don't start off by using platforms that are age inappropriate for you. That is why you would have to start with internal family rules. Which page can you visit? Which website is allowed? And for those of you who might be privileged, in, in the home, your little home routers can allow you to do this sort of internet filtering where it determines what website you can go to and what website you cannot go to. And for those of you using your phones, um, you can also download uh, some antivirus. You can download what they call web filtering, where web is W-E-B, and then filtering is F-I-L-T-E-R-I-N-G, web filtering. These apps would allow you to actually filter the websites that you visit so that the very harmful websites uh, would be pushed to the background. Then there is what we call netiquette. And netiquette is the etiquette that you have when you are using online platforms, okay? It is critical. Now, you might very soon, you know, get out of the space of parental control <laughs> into your own individual control. You will start working. You'll be going for interviews. Um, uh, people will be assessing you. I can tell you for a fact, 
social media history is now being used to assess people. So whilst you are online and you are disrespecting people, you are creating a footprint of disrespect of yourself online. It is part of your safety use because these things will come back and bite you. So you need to have a level of etiquette online, which is, they've, they've now coined the term and they call it netiquette. So it's the etiquette that you have. So long as you can't look, you can't look in the teacher's eyes and insult or use derogatory language, don't go online and, and, and do the same because you think you are behind the keyboard <laughs> and it's somewhere else. Let me tell you my peace of mind. <laughs> After all, I'm in my house. You know, and now you look at some of the posts and you see young men uh, insulting very early people and adding the caption, I'm in my house. If you like, come and beat me. It, it's, it's not very, it is not exciting. It is not exciting because you would find yourself in, in, in spaces where this information will be used to judge who you are, what your personality is. The next point is your social media decorum. I will defer that because I would like to show you a few things. Um, in terms of privacy, which I'll defer to as, as a demonstration later. But the next point which I'd like to demonstrate is password management, okay? All these platforms that we use, it goes down to what? Passwords, patterns, and pin codes, okay? So um, I think I have the opportunity to share screen. So let me just do that quickly. I share screen and then I would be discussing it. Uh, one screen share. Okay. okay. I want to believe that you can see my screen. Maybe one or two people should confirm if you can see my screen. Yes, yes sir. We can. Yes, sir. We can. Thank you. So yes, sir. We'll, be, we'll be doing a very quick exercise um, just so you can practically learn to create very good passwords, which you can remember because it's your first line of defense. Once the password is compromised, that your social media account is compromised. Your online learning platform is compromised. So this is what we do. Um, without boring you with all the technicalities of why we would want you to have a strong password, I thought a demonstration would do a better job. So I would go with the name of our um, lady moderator, uh, if I get it wrong, you would have to forgive me, but I thought I saw Oluwa Tosin, right? That's the, that's the name. Yes, sir. You got you correct. Awesome. Awesome. So I am assuming I'm going to use this name as my password. Now, when I put in this into the, you could see that it says 32 hours time to crack your password. It means that it will take an attacker 32 hours to crack this password that we have now in here, this one. Do you get it? At least a day and a half, an attacker would be able to get this password. So this is a very good reason why you can't use your first name as a password. Let's try my own name. My password is what? Very weak. We'll go back to my good friend again. Now, this is strong, but I will show you why. Now I changed it um, to a smaller uh, letter rather than upper, and now it's what, medium. But you see between Desmond and Tosin's, Tosin's name, um, Olua Tosin, the, the Desmond was very weak, and this is medium, right? It's the character, is the length, is the number of letters that is in it. It is important. But if she decides that, oh, it's too long, I want to remember my password, so I'll use Tosin. Then the password becomes very weak. So we would not, and, and it will be cracked by an attacker in less than a minute, 0 0.33 seconds, this password is no more. So what should she have to do? I would say go with the full name like this, and let's do some magic. Make sure this is an uppercase. Make sure this is also uppercase. Change the I to one because you'll be able to remember. And your A to an act. How many years is it going to take an attacker to get this? 19 years. 
So it is the same Olua Tosin, but then it's a stronger password than just using the text in raw. And that is very, very crucial. So creating your passwords, you have to be creative. That's why I'm doing this demonstration. You have to be creative. It has to be something you can remember, but it has to be strong enough to keep an attacker away from your social media accounts, your online learning accounts, and your devices. Let's go back since I use my name. What would, I, what would be the permutation for my own name? I can just change this and say I created this password in 2021. Then do a few markings for myself. And then guess what? I put in three spaces. This is as good as what? Two months. You could see that what you saw earlier had more strength in there. So depending on how you want to uh, do your permutation, how you want to replace various characters, you should be able to land yourself a very good, stronger password. And the joke that I always make, if you decide to use God as a password, it is as good as a 0 0.02 second password. So God is God, but leave him out of passwords. Unless you want to do the appropriate thing by probably saying um, God is good and then maybe you play with your spaces and change some few things in here. And this will give you 17 centuries. An attacker would have to struggle to get this password called God is good. Thank you, guys. I'll come back with another demonstration on social media privacy. <laughs> I will take it back. <laughs> Thank you, Desmond, for the demo. Uh, David, are you ready to continue from where Tosin left off or she takes it up again? No, I think his, uh, his bandwidth is still low. Tosin, okay, David. Um, okay. So what would be your recommendation to stakeholders? Um, David, recommendation in terms <laughs> of solutions? No, like consumers, regulators, and providers. Oh, oh, okay. All right. That's a smart one. Did you intend to corner me over there? I thought you no. go to IT. I thought you go to ITU before coming to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think we should even let them give us their <laughs> perspectives first before exactly. you then start it up and then uh, we, we can push that to either as a, a recommendation yeah. from the young okay. people. Yes. So, okay. uh, David. So let's, let's hear from, get your, from get them your first. I will reserve to, my, to my input yeah, for, for later. Don't you have anything to say? Right. So, uh, David, would you like to repeat your question? Um, what will be the recommendation to stakeholders like consumers, regulators, and providers? Um, please, did you get me? David, you may need to adopt um, Tosin's style of name calling. So perhaps you can call, of, call up on any of your um, friends to give us some feedback. Okay. Um, Thank you. Um, Roland, 
here about this one. Um, so like I don't know the, the names of the people. Okay. Yeah, Jamula. You are calling. So let me let me break down, let me break it down for you. Okay. Assuming you meet uh, for, for Ghana, let's say you, you, you happen to meet the Minister for Communications and uh, she asks you, the internet is great, but is there anything you would want done in order to make it a lot more child-friendly for you? What would be your response? The same way um, for the Nigerians, Assuming your NCC director comes to your school or in a meeting where you were and decides to ask for feedback on the kind of service you are getting as far as telecommunication or the internet is concerned, what would be your response? And I think very quickly, just following on those very key, key questions from Awo, I would want to also target Yodit, Lydia um, from, from uh, Ethiopia. What has been your experience with the internet here in Ethiopia? If you could uh, ask the government of Ethiopia to do something to make it better, what would it be? Um. I think the Nama wants to take it right. Okay, so well, I would firstly tell you about the application that I said earlier on. That's this we're trying to work on. Or better yet, they can work on they can work on that application themselves. If that application is out, well, the application is to link phones of words to their parents. So whatever you search for, whatever you do with the internet, especially when it's wrong or it's above your age restriction, it pops up to the parents' phone. So if they would help or assist these students to work out on it and then make it an official app, it would really help because the parents will be knowing whatever the child is doing without even touching the child's phone. Would you, would you always want Assuming your, your, your parents are not there. So let's say you are on uh, Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, and then you come across something you feel uncomfortable about. Let's say the body of somebody, naked body or somebody with a gun or something. Do you have an idea what to report to? I don't want you to assume that you are big girls boys and girls here, you are young people or the youth. So as much as possible, anything you're talking about now should go in your own perspectives. So assuming you chance upon something, what will you do? Do you know where to report the incidents or your experience in order to get help? Bring us a conversation. Let's know what is happening in your life. Also, in addition to what um, Madam Awo has just said, we'd also like to know if you have chanced upon such uncomfortable pictures and what your reactions were. Um, okay. I don't know if my marks made me less audible. So if you have chanced upon such uncomfortable pictures, then what did you do? How did you feel about it? And that actually goes back to the question, what would you rather the regulator, the government, your parents, your teachers, how do you think they would have prepared you for such an experience? What would they have said to you or shown you or taught you that would have better enabled you handle the situation at that time? These are some of the things we'd like that you please share with us.
Um, I, I've seen uh, Oles hand up. Kindly unmute yourself and speak up. Regarding this situation of the, let's say, he found a um, bad Instagram post. I believe people don't utilize the report function as much as they should. A lot of people say they go to their parents, go to teachers, I mean, but it's like, I believe if the person's post that you saw um, was not, we felt it wasn't um, appropriate, if enough reports are made against the person or the site, they should shut it down. Also, you could simply just block the person so you won't see those kind of posts from them again. Okay, that's an experience from uh, Nigeria, uh, Ghana, Ethiopia. Okay, Auntie, well, I think basically in Ghana would also do the same thing, reports the websites or whatever it is. But the issue is, it's rare to see people do it. People would hardly report the websites, the person, the account, or whatsoever it is. And in actual fact, people don't really know how to report it. They don't even know what, where the icon is to report and a whole lot. So to me, if the internet would be safer for teenagers or children like us, I think it would be better if, it would be best if we are educated on the internet. It would be best if we are educated when we see on how to react to things, such as seeing look pics and you want to report it. It would be best if we get such things. Yeah, just a, just a ignorance. And Antia, ignorance is also a factor to it. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Most people see it and then they don't think or they just try and then they don't they don't really care because they know the fact that it's actually harmful for them. So I feel like probably if we're able to take action and not just ignore when you see such things, it's really going to make the internet safer for us. Any other inputs from Ethiopia? Are you are you on or you falling apart? Susina, uh, you did. Do you have anything to add on that? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, so I have never experienced uh, this kind of photos or inappropriate things or uncomfortable things. But uh, I think if I experienced it, I would have reported because there is uh, many functions on uh, social medias that say, uh, if you have, uh, if, if this video is uncomfortable or it's inappropriate. There's a function called uh, report it. So I would have reported it using that uh, button. Thank you. OK, thank you. David, what would you do yourself? Have you experienced one before? And you too, right? Not really except for some Ghanaian Malam posts. I report some some of them I block. Some I report as calm. I okay, think that's thanks. all I, I have to say. All right then. Tossi. Yes, ma'am. In, in a situation whereby you don't have anybody to report to, I, I have been like, it happens to me a lot. Like, I open my phone to check my Google, to Google something, and I see um, things pop up. Like, that things people, like, have reported it before. I already know what to do. I just do the need for. We need to... People need to be aware of these things. 
Thank you. Uh, I will thank you. I will just walk you through uh, a short uh, presentation, just uh, highlighting some of the issues that uh, young people face. And interestingly enough, it's girls who face the situation the most. And sometimes you are generating the content yourself. So you form yourself with uh, that your secret friend and not knowing that the person is recording you and everything. So the research is so alarming. The, the findings of the research is so alarming uh, that 44% of inappropriate content online are self-generated and 96% of victims are girls. So um, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm happier seeing more girls on the, on the chat than boys. I feel there should be that uh, uh, protection going for everyone across board. But as much as possible, we would have to now go and serve as ambassadors in ensuring that people don't get into situations. And that's the more reason why the uh, ITU guidelines for child protection is very, very important. And uh, with this new guidelines, we have the guidelines for policy and all those other people, but most importantly, the workbook for young people. And again, in addition to the workbook for young people, there is um, an Instagram uh, campaign, which is focusing on various themes, so six specific themes, right to play, managing your screen time, um, how to manage exposure to inappropriate content, how to use the, the, the digital space, and your privacy as uh, indicated by uh, Desmond earlier. And the role parents can play in acting as role models for you. And in all of that, each of the issues that you would uh, engage with has a challenge for you. So at the end of the day, you take up the challenge to know your level of understanding of the issue. And in designing this, uh, David was part of the, 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 the young people who came up with this uh, recommendations for ITU. So I brought this together uh, here to share with you. And in terms of the reporting, you guys were right by saying that the, there are reporting portals there uh, at the various social media pages that you use. But then to also help you with that, there is a, more like a one-stop shop. So when you go to help.childonlineafrica.org, it takes you to all the applications or platforms in the world uh, that you engage with and how to report incidences when the time comes. Then um, to also quickly add that for Ghana, we have the Cybersecurity Center so the, the, the helpline is here, the, the call center is 292. The mobile app, which is on uh, Google Play Store is uh, NSC, NCSC Ghana. And you can also report at cybersecurity.gov.gh or even send a WhatsApp to this number. And for Nigeria, we have the toll free line, which is the 622. We also have the the child line, the child line gives you uh, counseling services as well as uh, removal services. So the child line is 0800-800. My system is going on and off. 0800-800-801 for, for, for young people. And then for adults, uh, it's also there. And uh, for email purposes, you can just send uh, cop at ncc.gov.ng. So uh, for the audience in Nigeria, but then we will share most of more of this uh, information on the pages for people to to pick on. So I would uh, turn over the microphone to uh, Shioma. If you have anything to say, we'll go back to our moderators and then we should be winding up for 
moderators, then Desmond comes in with uh, another demo for us before we, we call it a day. Okay. Thank you, Madam Awo. Thank you for all that information you just provided. So in addition to what you have just said, I'd like to add that the online conversation is an ongoing one. It's just going to continue because of what um, online education, online, everything now goes on to the social media platform. So this is not, um, it's not something that is going to stop soon. We are all as young children going to transit into more virtual conversations. I remember this month also mentioned it, how you're leaving your digital footprint. So you need to ensure that those footprints are correct and they are a true representation of who you are and what you want people to think you to be, what you want people to accept you as. In addition, again, I'd like to add that, please speak up. In Nigerian parlance, there's something we call sorosoke. Speak up. When you see something that is not going on well, when you see something not going on the way it should, when you see children being abused online or cyber bullied or being trailed or something, as long as you feel uncomfortable about something, talk about it. Talk to somebody. There's always a trusted adult around you. There's always someone you can speak to. Madam um, Awo has just shared the number of um, platforms, um, helplines, call toll free lines that you can assess. Share this information with your friends, share them with your family, and make sure you do not remain a bystander. You be an upstander. When it's wrong, it's wrong. It doesn't matter who is involved. You don't wait until you become a victim before you begin to talk. Once you see something is not going on the way it should, please speak up. Thank you very much. Madam Awo? Yeah, thank you, Shoma. Desmond, it looks like the moderators want me to take on their task. So please <laughs> <laughs> take action for us. Let's 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 feel the real experience from you uh, whilst okay. we <laughs> Yeah, it's always good to do this. Um, <laughs> I like it when people appreciate, you know, things in reality. Um, but before I go on, I, I just think I would add my last bit of pointers. Um, so first of all, when you are receiving online threats, you don't need to hide it. I'm, I'm speaking to our, our um, child or underage audience. When you are receiving online threats, you don't need to hide it. Um, I have been a victim parent before because my, at the time she was 14, now she's 16, she was threatened via a Facebook group, which a friend added her. Um, these were death threats because apparently she has, um, in the slang term, snubbed somebody who wants to talk to her and, you know, they started sending, sending her death threats. Um, how it ended up, it's more like a, a Rambo style movie, but you might not be that fortunate. You may not have the resources around you to do all that kind of investigation. So if you are getting online threats, please, your teachers are around, um, your parents, your guardians, adults you can trust, um, organization like Child Online Africa and those other representatives that are in the other countries, or even persons that you have had contact with who you know they can help. Quickly report these things because they do de degenerate into terrible incidents and it is not in your place to hide them because you think it happened online. The second point is um, for those who are not very familiar with the browsers, there's something called bookmarking. Um, I would suggest you begin to bookmark your favorite sites and pick them up from your bookmark because there are ways by which attackers can send you um, website links that look like the ones that you visit, but they are actually not the ones that you visit. They are fake website links and they are meant to compromise your device, get access to your data and then put you in a compromised position. So bookmarking is one of the things I insist people use. Know where your websites are. So start fishing up for your bookmark manager and ensure 
you are engaging your favorite websites from more like from a, a notebook where you have kept them. So you know that this is the website I always visit rather than trying to use it from the browser, which might not always be um, in the best of place for you. And then uh, I was going to talk about the awareness on reporting abuse, but I was done justice to that. I only show you a quick demonstration on how you can make uh, Google look for some of these things for you. And then I also show you why you should take privacy on social media serials, but I'll use Facebook to do that demonstration. The last part of my poly theory presentation has to do with what I call red flags. Now, the things that I'm going to mention, as soon as you are doing any of this, please, if you are a parent, if the child is doing any of this, it's a red flag for you. If you are a child, if you are doing any of this, it's a red flag for you. You are, you are creating a recipe for disaster. The first one is when you start taking, um, on when you start going online unsupervised for long hours. Long hours. And long hours means you're spending more than half, half an hour online and you're not really doing any study. You're just, you know, all, all out there, just what you call surfing. Because long hours online unsupervised for underage is not the best. You might not be too sure if you are being tracked. And so you have to learn to time manage your activities online. The second uh, point, which is another red flag, is when you start taking phone calls from strangers because you think you met them online. It is a red flag, huge red flag taking calls from strangers without any validation from third parties. You don't know them. You just thought not everybody you meet online is a human being. And I'm using the word advisedly. The third one is when you start receiving unsolicited gifts, emails, and messages. So your WhatsApp start buzzing with, hi, dear. Hello, you look nice. Oh, what's your name? When you start getting all those unsolicited chats, there is recipe for disaster. And then when you yourself become very secretive about your online activities, it's only, it has only one thing. There is something you want to hide and that's a problem. So if you, are not, if you are not in charge of yourself, so long as you're a child, so long as someone takes care of you, so long as you're a guardian, so long as under the text of the law, you are considered as a child, you don't want to have secretive online activities because um, we believe that you can't form consent on your own for certain things. I mean, for almost everything, apart from uh, uh, your right to education, your right to live, and those few other rights that you have been fighting for, <laughs> you know. And then finally, when you develop a withdrawal syndrome, you always want to keep to yourself and your phone and what is happening online. You don't want your family to know. You don't want your friends to know. You have quite a selective number of people that hey, come and look, and then yes, you have your own time out. Please, all these five points that I've given you are what we call red flags. They will lead to major incidents of online abuse, and some can even manifest in the physical, like the example I gave you about stalking using geotagging. You study the person's activity over and over, and then you begin to take whatever they put online, you put it together, and then you can stalk them. Um, these are not very interesting stuff. And I did not bring these things up to create maybe a paranoia in your mind. No, I want you to use the internet, use it freely, enjoy using it, play your video games, but be within, you know, your age limit scope. Make sure guardians, parents are aware of what you're doing online. If you are using it for research, good for you. If you're using it for studies, Good for you if you are watching movies, anything you are using your online platform for. So long as it's productive, I am saying keep doing it. But we are preaching safer internet and we need to understand the risk that comes with not doing things appropriately. I think at this point, I would stop uh, bashing you with long talk and share my screen. Uh, if you leave me, I could give a whole sermon. Okay. Please don't Let's give start. someone, give someone it. <laughs> okay. Let's, <laughs> Let's start with um, social media. I'm taking on Facebook. Now, okay, maybe 
Okay, guys, uh, let me do this first. The abuse. Let me do the abuse first. Now, um, this might be a little bit difficult, but look, you guys are digital age people and you are smarter than sometimes we want to assume. So just see if you can follow this conversation. It will help. Now, this is Google. And most of you are actually aware of what Google does. It looks for information. But inside Google, there are a few things that can happen. So I have placed in a text here. This information that you have here, which is called in-text, is something that Google respects. Google understands it. And then what you have here called sites, Google also understands it. So let me break them up. In-text with a colon in front is one. I am going to look for reporting abuse. So I'm, I'm telling Google, Google, in, in, in the text that you are going to search, find me reporting abuse. That's it. That's what the first part means. And you don't leave a space. So I'm going to close it. So reporting abuse, this is one information I'm looking for. Then where do I want the information? The abuse, where the abuse happened, that's where the, the site that you add to the search. So in this case, if it's Instagram, you can see that I have Instagram in front of site. Okay, now you come back to these things when you probably have forgotten uh, um, I had shared some repository with you or you don't know where you kept it, but you quickly want to do something. Once you bring in this information and you search, this is what Google does. It takes you straight to the help center of the portal or the platform where the abuse happened. So you could see here, help.instagram.com. Um, how do I report uh, a post or a profile for abuse or spam? Once you click and you go in there, there you go. Many have said that it's if it's not really user friendly, but depends on how you're going about it. It's it's better you know than you do not know at all. Even if you are getting an adult to help, you could share some of these tips. So they tell you what to follow. The intention is not to you know go in there but just to show you how to get the information. So let's assume it happened on Facebook. Anybody can tell me uh, what we will put in front of site. You can turn on your mic and tell me. We are looking for reporting abuse on Facebook. Nobody followed. Okay, so here we will type Facebook dot com in front of site oh okay there was a hand up sorry i would <laughs> sorry about that so now once i search it brings me to reporting abuse facebook help center so what i want you to learn or take away is that you can actually use google to look for some of these information for those of you uh, maybe senior secondary school let me bring back a quick demo that I did. Then I'll go to the privacy demo. I use the same information in a different form. So here, I'm looking for a title of a book. So I say in title, and then I say things fall apart. Then in text, I'm looking for the one who wrote it. So I say Chinua Achibe. And then I want it in PDF. So I have file type here, and then I have PDF. Once I search, it brings me a number of books with the name things fall apart. So I would open one and see if indeed is what I'm looking for. Oh yes, anchor books, things fall apart. Then the content is there. So what I have demonstrated to you is how to look for very basic information without wasting too much time so that you could get things done right. Now let's do our privacy demo and then I can wrap up from here. So this is the privacy demo. I'm using the same trick that I used in looking for the information. So this is what I'm going to do. And I come back here and I say in text. So I'm looking for names, Kwame AJ. So this is a random name. I don't know him anywhere. Then I say site, 
Then I, I asked Google to look for it from Facebook. Good. Let me start all over. I don't want to create. So here, Kwame Neje is somebody I'm looking for. And I'm trying to get the person from Facebook. I don't know him. So this is typically how a stalker or an attacker or anybody who is interested in looking for random information. This is how they work. So they search. So now look at the results here. My Google translating gone. So forgive me. The information here is basically saying I have searched results for 111,000. So and you could see the names keep showing up. Different Kwame AJ. So Nana Kwame AJ Buahin. Nana Kwame AJ. Emmanuel Kwame AJ. And all these guys are on what? Facebook. And I don't know them, but I want to just search information about them. So I decided to take the second person. Just to show you why privacy is important. I decided to take the second person. There you go. Mind you, we don't know him anywhere. Now, this is the danger of social media when you don't provide privacy. Now, I know this very person is a pastor in charge at a church called Calvary Charismatic Center. It is St. Kumasi. I can just scroll through randomly a few pictures of the person, probably. Oh, and what, what we don't like at all. This is a child and he's celebrating his birthday. And it is clear that uh, whoever shared it who is Kabna Brakun will be related to this person, this child. And funny enough, the child has a name on the image, Augustine Brakun. This is not right. This is not because this is how you collect information about people and began looking for them. So the, the attacker or, or the bad guy or whoever is interested in doing anything malicious, when they know what they are doing, they now they will now go to Kwame Mbraku's uh, account. They will find out where Kwame Mbraku lives. They will try to create a lot of activities, uh, paper trail activities around Kwame Mbraku until they are probably able to know where Augustine Mbraku goes to school. One day Augustine Mbraku goes to school, closes and within a split second, He's not returning home because he's been adopted. You see, an online activity that has created an offline event, which is unpleasant. That is why um, in closing up with this demo, I would show you that Facebook themselves provided a feature. So this feature is under privacy. I think I should go there. Yes, so here, once you do the settings and privacy, it brings you to this page. Once you come to this page, I want you to go up to check a few, uh, few important settings. When you open it, this step, everything here is important, but um, for, for the purpose of my demonstration, please check how people can find you on Facebook. There are three options. Friends request, phone number and email, search engines. So you continue. Let's skip this for now. Now, if you watch my phone number and email, I'm the only one who can do that. So you cannot get my phone number and use that to search for me online. But it's possible we can take other people's phone numbers and we can search them online without their knowledge and get every information that they have posted about this, themselves online without being their friends. That is where the privacy settings is important. You need to bring these things to life because that's the only way you can protect yourself and use the internet in a safe manner. Just like uh, our lady asked the question earlier on, is the internet really safe? And my question is, is as safe as the user wants it to be? Then you come down here, you could see, do you want search engines outside of Facebook to link to your profile? So the Kwame Ajays that were popping up, obviously, I've not done anything about this. So now if you leave that on, once you click it on, it means that what? You, you, are, you are allowing it to be set. And I think the default is for it to search. I said I set this thing up myself so it, for quite some time back. So I'm not too sure 
uh, what the defaults will be on your page. But what is important, the message I want to communicate through this demonstration is that turn off the privacy, turn on your privacy settings, sorry, and make sure that people are not looking for you via email addresses and via phone numbers, whether parents or child. And also ensure that through search engines, the accounts do not pop up. And for parents, because you are creating the accounts as pseudo accounts for your ward, it is more important for you to protect those accounts. You can take care of yourself. But what about the child? What, what if somebody profiles the account and goes back to the child, chats the child through um, um, a Facebook messenger and tell them everything they know about their parents? Because the, the only way an attacker would try to create uh, communication with the victim is to build trust. That's where issues of grooming and all these things come in. So if you allow too much information in the public, the, the, the attacker, and I'm using the attacker because I couldn't find any better way to describe, to describe this, this third party. You know, the, this person we are tagging the bad guy um, need enough information about yourself to be able to state some of these engagements, which is the reason why uh, my message is that deal with your privacy settings appropriately. So once all is set, you can just save it and you're done. But I'm not making any changes, so I closed it. Um, once you do okay. that, you are going to avoid an issue like the Kwame J search that we did. Thank you so much. Any questions for me, I'll take it um, as part of the major questions. Back to you, Awo. Yes. So if you have uh, questions for uh, Uncle Desmond, put up your hand and uh, ask the question. And from the feedback we are getting, we are likely to repeat the chat on the 27th of this month. Uh, so this is chat one, chat two will happen. So uh, we'll have more of uh, Uncle Desmond's demonstration uh, for you as well. So invite your friends, once the link is up, you, you, you register and have yourself in attendance. Um, so whilst we wait for the question, just to test your knowledge about what you've, uh, you've gone through today, the second poll is coming. <laughs> we need your responses. And then um, Tosin and David will give us their closing remarks. But then I think I can see Auntie Teki online. So if she wouldn't mind, we would love to hear her voice. These are a bit uh, complicated questions. But I expect that if you are not able to respond to them appropriately, by the 27th, you'll be on top of these issues. Because as one area we are focusing on in the Africa Safer Internet uh, Day Guide, which uh, the NCC will be giving out to some of you. I think those who are using the, the, the web version might not be able to see the polls. It's only those who are using the, the app version of Zoom that would uh, receive the polls. So maybe we, can, we might consider some teamwork of a sort <laughs> if, if your platform will not take the polls. Does anyone have a question for Auntie Ida or Uncle Desmond, uh, Auntie Choma or myself? or anybody else you think should respond to for you. So remember the next date, we are saying 27th, which is a, will be a Saturday, not a Sunday, whereby most of us will be caught up in church or rushing back from church. So the time will be communicated to you and you could relay the information to your friends as well. Okay, Tosin and David, your last words. As, as we wrap up this um, section, I want to thank the people that we learned from. Uh, Tosin, before, before you continue, Jake,
can you relaunch the polls? Some people said they haven't, they were just about completing when you ended it. So can you relaunch it? Thank you. So it's just to go again now. I think it's a full answer. Yeah, tossing over to you. Thank you, Ma. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Awo, for all you've said. And I know that all of us will have gotten many things from you and other um, teachers. And um, as you round up this section, I want to thank um, Mr. Desmond Israel, Mrs. Ao Aijang, um, Ms. Choma, Ms. Ida, um, and everyone that has been to this section. Thank you. And I hope yeah, I round up to David. Looks like David is off. Okay. Sorry. Are you with us, David? Okay, he's there. The last words. Um, actually, I don't have anything to say, but thank you. I just want to say. <laughs> <laughs> David is a, a man of short words. I I, I don't know. <laughs> so yes, uh, Tossing has already thanked all of us. So I would say may God bless you for making time to join us. But together we can make the internet better. And let's not forget to publicize. Let's become campaigners for the child online protection uh, guidelines or initiative so at home at school at church talk about the guidelines it has so much information for everybody everybody across board from policy right down to the children in at home and in the classroom so thank you very much but keep watching the platform the big day is tuesday and uh, more action will happen on that day and it will be uh, both virtual and uh, fiscal. Ah, I saw someone had changed, so <laughs> that's one. <laughs> right, so the polls, uh, the poll questions are still up for those who couldn't take part in the poll. poll. Officially, we are done. We've uh, eaten into your time, 26 minutes more into the, the actual time. This is supposed to be 90 minutes, but then we've done, uh, we've added 26 minutes to it. Thank you for your patience and uh, may God bless us all. Bye-bye.